Hi guys, today we're going to talk about how genetic variation and the environment work together um, and explain natural selection. Um, there's a couple conditions that you need to become familiar with and then use those conditions to explain how natural selection occurs. So the first is going to be genetic variation, overproduction of offspring, competition, and then adaptation. And we'll use those to explain natural selection. We'll go through each of these in a little bit more depth. So starting out with genetic variation, traits, as we talked about in our DNA unit, are controlled by genes. Genes are sections of DNA on a chromosome, and on each chromosome there's lots of genes usually. And so each um, individual has different forms of traits, and individuals within a population are not always the same. Obviously there's variation or differences within the population. Just looking at our cats here, these are all from the same parents. Uh, we can see that there's some differences in their fur colors, and they probably have some differences in their um, paw size and ear size, etc. And so these are all different variations of their traits. There's a certain amount of genetic variation in any population, and these unique combinations are produced, as we talked about in the DNA unit, through mutations, crossing over, and in meiosis through genetic recombination. recombination. And here we're talking about genetic variation with individuals in the same species. So these kittens are all part of the same species, but they're still going to have their differences. So in a bell curve, as we talked about earlier in the, in the school year as well, um, if we're looking at one individual trait, let's say that we're maybe looking at height, uh, how tall males are, for example, or we could be looking at females. Um, on our x-axis, we'd have the, the trait. Um, whatever that is. And so maybe this is, if this is height, this would be short on this end and very tall on this end. And then on the y-axis is our number of individuals. And so what this bell curve is showing us, if we were to measure a really large sample size, have a lot of individuals measured, we'd see that there's kind of a, a, an area where there's an average. So maybe here this is average or kind of the middle height. And there would be a lot of individuals, a lot of men or women, whichever we're measuring, in those different, in, in that average area. And there'd be less and less as we move out to the extremes. So there'd be not very many people that are really tall and not very many people that are really short. And so that's what a bell curve is showing us. It's showing us the genetic variation or distribution for one single trait for whatever group, individual, or species that we're looking at. But when we come back to natural selection, you'll see how this bell curve can shift over time as the environment selects maybe for these really short individuals or maybe over a long period of time for taller individuals. So another um, thing that you need to get really familiar with is in most species there's going to be an overproduction of organisms and so this is because life's hard and um, we'll talk about competition in a minute and not everyone can survive. So hopefully within even this group of offspring there are going to be enough differences in their genes that some of them will be better fit to environmental conditions and um, that's why there's an overproduction of offspring because not all of them can survive in the environment. And so building off of the idea that there's an overproduction of offspring, we have this issue of competition. If there's too many offspring produced, if there's too many individuals in the population in the environment, there's probably not enough food, shelter, or mates for them all to survive. Life isn't easy. This rabbit is probably going to be eaten by this uh, bobcat. And so there's competition for food, for shelter, and for mate. And, and this competition is what drives natural selection, as we'll see in our next couple of slides. <clears throat> so um, let's talk a little bit about adaptation. So um, there's a variation of traits um, that allow some to survive better, and these are adaptations. Um, over time, the individuals that have the traits that are best suited for the environment are going to pass on their genes. So you can imagine in that slide previously, if it's always going to be snowy, a white rabbit is going to have an adaptation um, that allows them to survive in the environment maybe better than like a brown-haired rabbit. But if we had a change in climate over several, you know, hundreds or thousands of years, and there was no more snow, maybe the brown rabbit would survive better in the environment. And so after several, several generations, um, a population can adapt to the environment and eventually develop into a new species. New species do not develop within one generation, and they do not develop um, with uh, different organisms mating.
And those differences between the white or the brown rabbit, those are coming from genetic variation. Maybe at the beginning or, or as the environment starts to change, we may not see a fully brown rabbit, but there's going to be some different shades in the mm -hmm. color of the fur. And so a, a slightly darker shade of white is probably going to blend in a little bit better than a really white furred rabbit. Yeah, and you can think of that with these um, finches up here too. Maybe all, you know, the finches that started on the island had a beak like this, and over time they, there were some adaptations that were slightly larger, and so over time you get a, a bird with a, a beak of that size that can take advantage of a new food source. And so putting this all together is, is this idea of natural selection. And as a result of genetic variation and competition, individuals that are best fit uh, survive to reproduce and pass on their genes to the next generation. And the, the key part here, the, the thing that's important is this fitness. Um, fitness does not mean that you're strong or that you're smarter than another individual. It means that your traits are best fit or, or help you to survive the best or better than other individuals in the environment. And so individuals that survive and reproduce, that's the key part. Mm -hmm. if, if an individual isn't reproducing, they're not passing on their genes and traits. So an individual that survives and reproduces, they have the highest fitness for their environment. Survival is dependent on the conditions of the environment. So the environment um, is what's selecting for the different types of traits. And as this po process is repeated over numerous generations, species can change over time. And we can actually track this and we'll look at some of the ways that we've been able to observe this in humans' lifetimes uh, over the next couple of lessons. But remember what Mr. Ritt said about fitness. It's not how strong you are. The strongest do not always survive um, because you have to be strong, um, but you have to be able to reproduce. And if sometimes being too strong in the environment is actually a bad thing because you require more food. And we'll talk about that. Um, if you feel like you really understood the lecture and the reading that should have gone along with this, you should be able to answer these questions. Um, we'll revisit these four questions at the beginning of class, and we expect you to be prepared to answer them. So if any of these stump you right now, Go ahead and take a look at the reading again or um, skim through our lecture video one more time so that you feel prepared um, to answer these.